What's up everybody, Todd here. Today we're going to install a Load Lifter 5000 Ultimate Airbag Kit from Airlift on our 2022 Tundra Overland build. For this installation, I'll be using an electric impact driver with a 12 millimeter, 13 millimeter, and 9 16 sockets, a 9 16 half inch and 13 millimeter wrenches, 7 30 seconds and 5 millimeter Allen wrench, a pry tool, a drill with 5 16 drill bit, and a tubing cutter. Now make sure you're subscribed to our channel to stay up to date with our latest content. Let's go and get started. Okay, so here we are at the rear of the vehicle. I've already got this up off the ground, supported the frame. I've also got a couple of floor jacks supporting the axle. Um, now what we're gonna do first is remove this factory jounce bumper. The way we do that is we've got three bolts that need to come out. All three of those are gonna come out using a 12 millimeter. Okay, now up on top of the frame, we've got a module that it does not exist on the driver's side, just on the passenger side. So this is actually the only part that is gonna be different from the passenger side and driver's side. Everything else is the same, just a mirror image. So for right now, this module needs to be removed. Uh, so we're just gonna take loose this bracket. We've got two bolts need to come out using a 12 millimeter. Okay, now down here at the axle, we're gonna notice we've got our e-brake cable that's coming back. We're attached to a bracket on uh, the, the axle here. This needs to come loose. So again, we're gonna use a 12 millimeter, pull this bolt out. Okay, now here is our axle again. This is the back side of the axle, so that is the rear of the vehicle back there. Uh, here we have a brake line that's coming along the back side of the axle uh, and it's held in by a bolt with a clip. That bolt needs to come out so we can flip that clip around. What that's going to do is that's going to bring this brake line closer to the axle when we put the bolt back through because we're going to have a bracket that wraps around that and we want to keep that bracket away from the brake line. So we're going to go ahead and pull that out with a 12 millimeter. Now with this clip, we just kind of spread the clip apart, pull it off the brake line, put it back on there and squeeze it back together again. Once that's back in place, we're going to take our factory bolt, go back through the clip, and then I like to make sure I get the threads started on there. Because we're putting this clip on a little bit different, uh, it is a little easier to, uh, to cross thread that, so you want to make sure it's not cross threaded and then go ahead and tighten it back up using that same 12 millimeter. There we go. Okay, now in your kit, you're gonna find a bracket that looks like this. Uh, and I wanna point out a few things to you. You got some oblong holes here and here. Uh, you've also got a couple of round holes here and then two round holes here that are further apart from each other. This is gonna help you to figure out what the correct orientation is. The holes that are further apart from each other face towards the front of the vehicle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, out of our kit, we've got a couple of button head screws uh, that use a, an Allen wrench to tighten down. We're gonna put those through the oblong holes and we're gonna take and attach this bracket to the bottom of our frame going into the factory holes that the jounce bumper uh, was attached to. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put those on there just finger tight for right now. We still need to adjust this. Just make sure once it's in place, it can still slide back and forth. All right, next we have our top bracket that's gonna sit on top of this and also attach to the frame. In order to mount this properly, this little plastic plug needs to be removed. So I've got a little plastic pry tool and one pop it loose. And here is our bracket. Now you wanna make sure this portion right here faces towards the front of the vehicle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set it on top of the bracket we installed to the bottom of the frame, lift up our module and set this up against the frame like that. Now we also wanna be able to adjust this bracket underneath the frame back and forth to where it lines up to the holes here and then also this hole lines up here.
Okay, once all three of these holes are lined up, we can go back up underneath and tighten down those button head screws with a five millimeter Allen wrench. Okay, so here is our airbag. Now you're gonna notice this is the top here. We've got two mounting holes and then one air hole. On the bottom side, we're only gonna have the two mounting holes. We're focused on the top side first. What we're gonna do is take our air fitting. You've already got uh, some thread sealant attached to the air fitting. We're gonna go ahead and put that in there and just kind of thread it in there finger tight first. Once it is as tight as it will go finger tight, we're gonna take a half inch wrench and turn it one and one half turns to get it fully seated. There's one. And one half. Next we're going to take one of our roll plates, turn that upside down so that it cups the airbag and make sure you got everything lined up. Uh, these holes are going to line up to your mounting holes and this hole is going to line up to uh, your air hole. All right, next we're going to find our top bracket. Now that's going to line up to uh, the air hole and also the mounting holes, but before we set that in place, we're going to take a couple of carriage bolts out of our kit and go through this hole and this square hole over here. Um, these holes right here stay open for right now. We're going to go ahead and lower that down. And then also in our kit, we're going to have a couple of black button head screws. Um, these bolts are different than the black button head screws we used on the bottom of our frame. These are actually a standard thread. The one on the frame was a metric thread. So once we get that all lined up, we're gonna go ahead and tighten these down with a 5 16 Allen wrench. All right, now we can go ahead and turn that upside down. All right, next we're gonna take our next roll plate, set it on top and make sure that these holes are lined up to our mounting holes. All right, next we've also got our bottom bracket. Now, this is going to be kind of seed out. This is all upside down, so this is gonna be cradling over top of our axle. Uh, before we can attach this, we've also got a couple of long carriage bolts. Those need to go up through the bracket and seat into place. Once that's lined up, then we can go ahead and line this up to our mounting holes. And then take the other two button head screws or button head bolts out of the kit. Line those up to our mounting holes. Now we're going to tighten these up with a 5 16 Allen wrench. One thing to note is that when it sits in place, this needs to be facing towards the inside of the vehicle. This is going to be facing towards the outside of the vehicle. This is also going to be facing towards the inside. Let's go ahead and take it to the truck. Okay, now here is our airbag assembly. We're gonna go ahead and put that over top of our axle. Uh, now you'll notice I've got one of our bolts, the carriage bolts going on this side of the axle, kind of in between the axle and the e-brake cable. Uh, and then this one over here, I've got uh, on, uh, on the front side of the brake line, uh, not touching the brake line. I'm making sure that nothing is touching down here. I'm gonna go ahead and raise this up now. We've got the two carriage bolts on the top bracket of the airbag. I'm gonna slide that up into place. Once that's up in place, we can go ahead and take some provided hardware. This is a serrated flange nut. It's gonna go on each of the carriage bolts coming up the top of the bracket. We're just going to put those on finger tight for right now. Make sure those carriage bolts are all the way into the bracket. That way it comes up all the way up into the uh, bracket up top.
Okay, now that we've got these two nuts hand tight, what I'm gonna do is take this supplied bolt from our kit. This is a flange bolt. We're gonna go through the bracket into the frame and we're gonna tighten that down with a 13 millimeter. Next, we're gonna go ahead and snug these all the way down using a 9 16 wrench. All right, now we've still got two more uh, carriage bolts in our kit. Those are gonna come up through the bottom along with a serrated flange nut up at the top. Both of those are also going to be tightened down with 9 16 Okay, now as far as the module, what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the module to the bracket. And we're gonna use one of the bolts that came out from the module. So this is a factory bolt that's gonna go through the front side. And on the back side, we're gonna use the supplied washer and nylock nut. And we're gonna tighten that down. We've got a 13 millimeter for a nylock nut. And then on the front side, the 12 millimeter that came out. Okay, now this is our U-shaped bracket that is going to attach to our carriage bolts. Um, you've got a rounded side that goes towards the hub and the squared outside goes towards the center of the vehicle. What we're gonna do is line up our carriage bolts to these holes here. As we're lining them up, um, you know, take note and make sure that you're not allowing the carriage bolts to be tightened up against our brake line bracket or against the axle. We need to have a little bit of space in between each one. All right, we're gonna use supplied hardware. We've got a washer and a nylock nut. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and tighten down these nylock nuts uh, to get this bracket pulled down to the axle. It's good to have support underneath the axle and you can push up on that, just make sure you're not pushing it off of uh, your frame supports because uh, you wanna make sure everything stays safe. But you're gonna to have to tighten these down evenly. So tighten this one down a little bit and then come over here and tighten this one down. Um, I've got a 9 16 that will fit on an impact driver I can do on this side, but that impact driver won't go on this side, so I have to use a ratcheting wrench. We're just going to do a little bit at a time. All right, now go ahead and tighten these down to 10 foot-pounds. Also make sure that our carriage bolts are not rubbing up against our brake lines or up against the axle. Okay, now we need to go ahead and reattach our e-brake cable. Now it's going to fasten to this tab coming off our lower bracket. So what we're gonna do is use the factory bolt that came out of the e-brake cable bracket and go through. And then we'll use a supplied flat washer and nylock nut to secure it from the bottom. We're going to hold that nylock nut with a 13 millimeter wrench and then use a 12 millimeter to tighten up the top. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same process on the driver's side. Like I said before, it is a mirror image of the passenger side, except the module doesn't exist on the driver's side, so we can go ahead and skip that part.
Then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to run the airlines. Okay, so here I am at the back of the truck. Now there's a number of different ways you can run the air. If you've got a compressor, follow the instructions to use the compressor. Uh, with this one, we're not using a compressor on this. We're just going to run the Schrader valves to the back of the, the truck. This is where our license plate sits, and so I disconnected our license plate, but I use the license plate as a template to drill these two holes. I've already got the airline run on this side, so I'm just going to show you on this side. So I drilled the hole. It's a 5 16 hole, so you need to use a 5 16 drill bit. I also notched out this portion because on this truck, that gets in the way, and I, I want to make sure that everything can fasten at the back. Um, now, this is our Schrader valve and our nylon line. Uh, I've already cut the line in half, um, and uh, whenever you cut nylon line, make sure you do not use scissors. Either use a sharp utility blade or use a tube cutter. Uh, next, what I'm going to do, take our Schrader valve, and then we've got uh, a supplied uh, nut that's going to slide down the Schrader valve. I, I like to put it all the way down to the end of the Schrader valve, and then we've got a star bit that goes on there. And next, we are going to go to the back side and feed the Schrader valve through. We're going to take a rubber washer, run it on there. I like to take the 13 millimeter socket and just push it all the way on. We're going to take a flat washer, and then our other nut is going to go on this side. We're going to get it finger tight at first. Then to tighten it down all the way, we're going to use a 13 millimeter wrench on the back side where the nut is. And then we're going to use a 13 millimeter. I'm using a deep well socket to tighten it down. You don't need to get it super tight, just get it nice and snug. Then you can put the valve cap on top, but this is just showing you what it's going to look like. We'll actually be reinstalling the license plate and then put our valve caps back on. Okay, now I went ahead and ran the tubing up along the top side of the frame. Uh, make sure for a couple of things, you want to make sure to keep it away from any kind of sharp edges and use zip ties to secure it out of the way so it doesn't rub against those sharp edges. Also, make sure you don't have uh, a bin that's too tight on here. Make sure the line doesn't get kinked and make sure the line stays at least six inches away from any kind of exhaust. Uh, now what we're going to do is go ahead and run this down. We're going to measure it uh, down to where our fitting is. And then I'm going to use a tubing cut, uh, cutter and, and then all you do is just line it up and push straight in and there we go. Okay, I've gone ahead and hooked it up to an air compressor. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put some pressure into the airbag and make sure I can check for leaks. And then I want to bring it down to five pounds of uh, pressure because you don't want to run the airbags with less than five PSI. Let's go ahead and turn it on. You want to put about 40 to 60 PSI of pressure in there before you bring it back down so you can check for any kind of leaks. And then we can go ahead and bring it back down to five. Well, that concludes the installation. If you found this video helpful, make sure and give us a thumbs up. If you want to know more about the product, check the link in the description below. And as always, if you have any questions, call the experts or visit us online at realtruck.com.